So I'd argue that is pretty pretty. Oh my! <laughs> Hello, YouTube. And welcome to Fine Day. Today we are going to have a look at Prime Speaker Vanifor in Historic Brawl. This deck aims to win by having the correct answer to whatever the opponent is doing uh, at all time when you have your commander, basically. So the way this works is you sacrifice a creature with Prime Speaker Vanifar, and then you have three creatures that can untap Vanifar at different mana costs. So that's Corridor Monitor, that is Hyrax Tower Scout, and that is Breaching Hevelcap. So when you have a one drop on the field, it rep basically represents any 2-5 to five drop that your deck has to offer. Uh, so this deck also has a combo win, keep that in mind. Uh, time Warp, in, you, you play the extra turn, now it's in the graveyard. You return it with Timeless Witness to your hand and you can play it again. And then you can play Thassa Deep Dwelling and then always just blink the Witness. And then keep returning Time Warp. But that's not our main goal, uh, usually. Another thing about this deck, this is uh, again a very similar deck to Captain Sissy, but Sissy's combo is like actively way more consistent to go infinite with. So we actually use the uh, like tutoring abilities of Prime Speaker Venerf are way better than in Sissy because in Sissy 50% of the time you just win basically when she untaps right um other than that we have a bunch of ramp right we have nice uh, interactive pieces at different mana costs so we have a way to get an enchantment or out of the way or artifact out of the way at two mana we have one at three mana, we have ways to copy cards, and the really really nasty thing this deck does is when you untap with Wenifar, you basically always have access to a Mind Flare, and that can just really really mess up some commanders like Oswald when you steal the commander, like they're not really equipped to deal with that usually. Also we go up to seven mana for Agent of Treachery, and we have three six drops, so I don't expect to go always to 7, but we can go there and then it's rather annoying, especially when you go to 4 afterwards with Thassa and keep blinking the agent and then it's GG. So I hope you will enjoy the games, please like and subscribe and let's go. We are ready to play against Cody vs Codex. And... I'd argue this hand is pretty good. I like the Reclamation Sage here with the Thassa combo to always keep them off their commander basically. Riptide Laboratory is here because it can protect Prime Speaker Benefar from the commander cost basically. But you can also bounce stuff uh, with the Riptide Laboratory like the Mask Vandal because that is a changeling so you can like to some extent get rid of all of their enchantments and artifacts. So let's start out on the Crashing Drawbridge. Which is pretty powerful because giving our commander haste is huge. So now they drop Cody, we Reclamation Siege. Mm -hmm. Nope. And we don't have any non-creatures. So that is unfortunate. We will Reclamation Siege the opponent. And if they drop a land here... Yes and play Cody again. I'm just going to play Thassa instead and then just blink the Reclamation Sage. Okay, what will you do, opponent? What will you do? Let Cody again would be the optimal play for us, but they know that we have the play, so I don't think they will make it. It's interesting, I... Okay. <laughs> Yeah, they just surrendered that. <laughs> I was about to say, um, it's interesting what side we're going to play this on, because like this deck uses double green and double blue, but it doesn't matter in the end. GG. We are ready to play against Jorn, God of Winter. And no ramp pieces. No blue for all of our blue cards. A breaching hippie camp in a hand, which is always not optimal. So, yeah, um, no blue this time, hmm, I'm seeing a pattern, let's mulligan again. Okay, that's reasonable, I think I don't need the, it's either the Lomi Shaman or the Questing Beast, I think. 
I don't think that I need the reshuffle yet. And I'm going to play the Balagat Recovery Tapped here. Because while it's nice to play this, the back it is also there because it has a backside and giving us the consistency of doing exactly this, right? So let's see. Vizier of Tumbling Sands is a pretty nice utility card because it can untap Vanifar, but it can also untap it from hand, if that makes sense, and draw a card. So it just has a bunch of util utility. <coughs> Okay. Uh, so, first and foremost, the question is, are they a deck that uses the front side of Jorn, or are they a deck that uses the back side of Jorn, right? Like, I, I personally think the front side is way, way stronger, and you can do some really nasty extra turn stuff with it by repeatedly attacking with them, and then being able to untap all your lands each turn, basically. Okay. I'm going to not play the breeding pool here. Uh, because that is hidden information. They are going to play Jorn, or Jorn, however you want to pronounce it. I I assume that, at least. Okay. Um, I'm not that comfortable playing the Vanifar out here, but I think I have to. I would love to get a value engine, but... Okay. Let's do it like this. Yep. And let's hope Vanifar sticks, because this deck usually instantly wins when you get to activate Vanifar. So don't expect him to always stick, to be honest, otherwise the deck would be way higher in win rate, right? I mean, it's already a strong deck, don't get me wrong. Right. So now they float the mana. Uh, oh, they missed to float the mana. Okay. I'm just taking the damage here. I like in case they have like a minus two, minus two on the board effect or something like that to get rid of their my commander. Not taking any chances. So we can go up to six here. By questing beast, sacrificing it, yada yada yada. Um, let's start there. And I'm currently thinking what we can get. It's probably I like to go Thrag Tusk, and then just gain the life of the Thrag Tusk, or maybe the green Cavalier to get some. No, the blue cavalier is way better. The blue cavalier is actually insane here. And then we end in a Kogla, I think. Yeah. I like that. Okay. So now we go into blue cavalier to get a brainstorm effect to shuffle these lands away. Um, yep. Boom and boom. Yes, untap. And the scry does absolutely nothing here because it resolves before we shuffle with Vanifar. Okay, and we get a Kogla, fight their commander, so like we don't take any chances with that basically. <clears throat> and it would have been great obviously if we had one more um one more mana to hold up the counter spell, but I think it's fine. <clears throat> okay, casualties of war. That's a reasonable play. Yes, commander goes to the command zone. The question is, do I even replay Vanifar here? I think I do. They didn't have cheap removal earlier. And there's still just a threat of the Kogla, right? Like, Kogla is very, very threatening. Okay, do you have more answers, opponent? That's about sure. Yep. And the best thing about this is 
they have to answer primes because then for every turn well now they have a bit of breathing breathing room right but like it's just so obnoxious for them like with this kogla as well like it's just killing them and yeah let's float mana and then we play the thassa and hold up counter spell nice the best thing is about this is that we can save our kogla by giving it indestructible because we can actually activate it because vizier of tumbling sands is a human so that is pretty pretty great not gonna lie <clears throat> so if they have like a uh it needs no social or something or like a revenue triple curve that says destroy Yep, now the we still do this because now the murderous rider fizzles. Because the graveyard. Mm -hmm. And we just Yeah, they see the writing on the wall. I was about to say we always just hold up two mana for the card as well. We attack, kill the ornithopter with the Kogla trigger, they have to jump here and it's an uphill battle for them for sure, GG. We are ready to play against Catilda. Um, she was in a video of mine two days ago or something like that. So check that one out if you haven't. Um, as for now, I go first. And that is a golden opportunity to counter Catilda, to be perfectly honest. Do I want to have triple blue or triple green? That is the question. Based on my hand, triple blue, but knowing the deck, more like triple green. Doesn't matter. I'm not going to double spell most of these, right? Um, so it's more like what cavalier do I like more? Sure. <clears throat> like getting to counter this, where their whole deck is basically revolving around getting her out early. It's just huge for us. It's just huge. Okay, they play Catilda, we counter. Or maybe they are playing it safe, and arguably they should. Don't know. Mm -hmm. Reasonable. Hero of Precinct 1. That is a great card, honestly. That allows you to, to do some cool stuff, though. Nice. <clears throat> okay. We are waiting. Next turn I'm just going with Forest Tangled Florahedron. And I hope like this combo of cards that this just takes over the game. Mm -hmm. And Catilla get countered. I really, really don't enjoy your presence here. Okay, now that we have used our counter spell, I would argue that we are going with Prime Speaker Vanifar. Yep, and then next turn we can, if they play land, the worst thing is play land and then use the three mana they have to play like a banishing light. Um, but other than that, I am probably, oh, a lead spellbinder. So they take the Agent of Treasure here, maybe? Yeah, completely reasonable. And now let's... Ah, oh, it's interesting. I really want to play this as a land. Like, really, really. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because I really want to make my land drops, but then again... I'm just going to let this enter as an elite spellbinder to look at their hand. And then pot this up to... Oh yeah, um... Hmm. Yeah, let's get rid of Vivian. And pot this one up to a steel spell. So now we get Breaching Hippocamp. Untapping Prime Speaker Venifar. And now we steal Katilda. Pretty great. 
Uh, yep, sure. Mind flare you. Nice. And now we have ramped ourselves as well doing this. And we can drop Vorniclex next turn. Oh, they just surrender. They really don't like steel effects. Man, so many surrenders. We are ready to play against Chulain, Teller of Tales. And yeah, this seems decent. Uh, hitting land drops will be nice. But time warping is pretty powerful. If the if I would pl play against the black deck, I would play this untapped to counter their thought seizes. But they are not playing black. Land, please. Pretty please. That. Damn it. No land. That is extremely unfortunate. And we drew the hippocamp, so that is kind of tricky. Mm hmm. I'm not going to let you cultivate, sorry. Like, if you give a Chulain deck enough mana, it's really, really disgusting what they can achieve. Okay. That is reasonable. And we do this. Got a blue. Because we do have a cavalier in hand. Hmm. This is tricky. I think I will pot up the questing beast to a mind flare here. I can also float the mana and pod one of these up to into four drop and then take an extra turn. Huh. What four drops do I have? I have some red. Add one mana of any color blue, add one of any color green. Yep, uh, sacrifice you. And... Honestly, yeah, I like it. I could also just get... Yes. I think I, I'm going Hyrule's Tower Scout. Sacrifice, get a Wicked Wolf fighting their Marileaf Pixie. Or... Thassa is also decent. Just like down the road. I could also just Timeless Witness the... Oh, I could have played Time Warp first and Timeless Witness the Time Warp. No, I like the... Oh no, Spark Doubling the Vanifar. Yes. Yeah, you have a lot of options here. That's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Oh my god. Uh, yes, please. I am just going to... Oh wow, I can 4, 5... So this is a 3, then I play the Hippocamp. And then untap both. And then this is 5, 6. And then we Kogla and... Yeah, I like it. Okay, let's do you. Is there a way to get more mana here? Honestly, just getting a Loaming Shaman? No, I, the Breaching Hippocamp is my... I like Visionary here. Because it also gives me, hopefully, Land Drop, but it didn't. Okay. Get you, and I'm about to think that maybe Code Lane is better. I really, yeah, I really want to hit my Land Drops here. Yep. And we got an untapped green, so we can still snake skin veil. Um, sure, it uh, doesn't... If we take... that's basically the one card we want in our graveyard, right? Um, so getting the hippocamp is probably good to go from... No, uh... Yeah, hippocamp is good because then we can druid, get to three, untap with monitor, get... 
to four and on four we can get the we can get what's its name breaching hippocamp again and we have a protection up that's pretty pretty great yeah i i really like the spot we're in okay what can the opponent do sure that's absolutely fine And all seed, yes. Okay, so they have protection up with the all seed. Have to keep that in mind. But I can attack first with the Kogla, and then I, I'm forced, like they're forced to let this go. Okay. Uh, so Kogla swings in for sure. Destroying all seed. Um, they give Tome Rider protection from green to block the Kogler. Mm -hmm. Nice. And I couldn't do a bunch of stuff here, but the stuff I am about to do is going to be very, very hilarious. Okay, watch this, guys. It's disgusting. It's go time. Okay, Kogla. And we're not going to attack their mana base, like their actually ma actual mana base, right? So now one float you. Now we copy you. Steal you. We are going to play you. Transgressions against Sky Shroud. Our transgressions and Ah damn it in no, I, I think I couldn't have got, got, gotten another copy. All the copy spells are at four, right? Oh no, I can get another copy. Ew. And now... Oh, I should have played this afterwards. So, if I played this afterwards, right? This would have gotten plus one, plus one in my hand, perpetually. Anyways, Paradise through it, and now I copy the agent again with this. So I'd argue that is pretty pretty oh my Oh my lord And that was disgusting Uh doesn't really matter like I, I, I don't care I don't care Sure I like this game is over this game is absolutely over. Triple agent. So, in case you're wondering, if you control three or more permanents, you don't only draw three cards, which is a line that people usually never get to see on agent. <laughs> That's amazing. We are ready to play against Yogmoth, Thran Physician. And having high toughness on our creatures is amazing, but you know what's even more? Oh my god. God, that is one of the most disgusting opening hands I have had in a while. Holy moly. I think I'm just want to hit my land drops instead of having a Thrag Tusk, I guess. Okay. Lano Elves. If we draw a Mana Dog here, that would be absolutely insane because we can go Lotus Crowbar land Mana Dork again Wow um, This hand is absolutely not fair. I mean honestly, I'm expecting that a Yawgmoth that can come back from this for sure right But <laughs> wow Okay, they are thinking And they play the swamp thought sees us Static Awakener. Oh my god. I'm so sorry, opponent. I am so sorry. Oh wait, no. Nah, no, I'm not. <laughs> oh my god. So that is one, two, three, four, five, six man on turn three. Hey, wait, I know a deck that can do seven, almost as if Kindle is broken with less effort. <laughs> No, but joking aside, um, this is an insane board. Okay, Yarox Fenlok, sure. And I guess I get rid of 
the island? Sure. And I can just dump out my hand here. Oh no. Now I'm inclined to not dump out my hand. Because the Essence Flux is also a really good protection piece. I have to play land here to keep it up, right? Yes. Okay. So now I have... 7 mana effectively, because I, like, I can play Fraley's untapped card and then play Vanifar. But then I don't hold up the... Um... I don't hold up the Essence Flux. Okay. Reasonable. Also, obviously, Essence Flux is not only good as a protection spell, but also just to blink Agent of Treasuries and all of that, right? Like, it's just a really nice utility card that has a ton of use cases. I really like it. Mm -hmm. He is attacking. Honestly, I'm I'm not taking any chances. No blocks whatsoever. I don't care about the damage. Like I never block this anyways because that represents a four to four with the sacrifice, right? And then if they sacrifice, it's not it's like, yeah, exactly, right? Like no need to block anything here. Okay, um, we pot up to five. Is there a five that we want to blink? Thractus is incredibly disgusting to blink, isn't it? We can also go up to six. Is there a six that we want to blink? No, maybe. Like, we can also just blink in between, right? And then just upgrade these into something else, like a Mask Vandal. Again, the goal is to go to seven right now, in theory. Do we go the full way with the Lano Alps here? Okay, let's first this green tab. And then you and you, right? We go the full way here with the Lano Elves. So, pod you up into Corridor Monitor. Untap. Pod you up. And I think it's just valuable to get the all the different... Like, to just have a high CMC card so we can start using Agent of Treachery. Breaching Hippocamp. Mm -hmm. And now we... I believe we get a Thrag Tusk. Or a Caval... Honestly, I'm not even going to use the Essence Flux to just... Um... To really just blink the you underestimate our strengths. agent next turn or to protect the Vanifar, right? Kogla, fight you. Now we have... We don't have human, but yeah, that's GG. Yep, GG. We are ready to play against Yorian, the Sky Nomad. Or Sky Serpent? Yeah, Sky Nomad. Oh, this is a bit awkward. We don't have a two drop. Negate is nice though. Like stopping their early enchantments from hitting the board so they can't blink it later, right? Like they get their value by playing Yorian on curve and then blinking things. But if they don't have anything to blink, then the Yorian doesn't really have that much value on curve. Hmm. I'm inclined to mold this though. That's not really better. But I'd argue it's okay because. If I just get one more land, I can Solemn Simulacrum and then fix my mana that way. Or, you know, just draw a Leafkin Druid. That also works nice. Can need one more land. Charming Prince, yep. Absolutely understandable card. Oh, yes. Elisar Shepherd is a nice one against their deck, probably. Probably. If I don't draw land, the turn is honestly pretty easy with Elisar Shepherd and Leafkin. Like, I want to ramp, and then I, like, I'd rather have this on board than trying to get value out of this. 
Ooh, beautiful. Honestly, now I'm just going for Allosaurus Shepherd and leave Kindred anyways. And then I still hold up the concerted defense. Yep. Reasonable. And then next turn I this is uncounterable. And then if they have like an enchantment like a removal spell I can defense it. Because this is a wizard, so this is basically a spell priest if our commander is on the board, and if we have a masked vandal, it's even better. <clears throat> Teleportation circle. No. That's the exact card I don't want to see on the opponent's side of the field. Drawing a blue source would be absolutely amazing, so that way we can hold up counter spell while having the benefit. We can get a timeless witness. Time warp loop going. If we manage to untap and then get a Thassa. Honestly, let's do this. Hope they don't have a board wipe. A board wipe would be extremely concerning. ECD. That is absolutely reasonable opponent. Mm -hmm. Put you back. And then I'm likely just going to use some of the simulacrum. I'm arguably should have. Arguably should have um, killed the Charmory Prince if they can't loop it with the Orion. So now the question becomes do I want to use 4 mana to counter their Yorian because it's going to cost 2 more with the Elspeth Conqueror's Death next turn, or do I want to play the Solemn Simulacrum and try to get this loop here going? Like, I want to now get up to 9 mana, so that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and then if I draw an untapped land, I can Vano for Time Warp and then basically just win. That's a lot of upside. That is a lot of upside if I draw a land here. Okay. Let's try. Let's try. And they're super inclined to just pull in Yorin here, right? Like, keeping the Elspeth's Conqueror's Death around, um, tr going into a loop with Charming Prince, exiling the Salmus Mimulacrum, which I arguably kind of care about because I wanted to die not to get exiled, but beggars can't be choosers, I guess. Mm. Oh, I also can't go into a Time Warp loop. Mm. At least not right now. I think I just... Wait, nothing? Oh, wait. Those are two, both elves. Yes. I'm just going to kill the opponent. Yep, see you right. Oh wow, they're also get wow, they're, they're also becoming dinosaurs and this is getting to be a 3-3. Three, three. This is the first time this dinosaur line is actually relevant. I'm so amazed by this. That's amazing. Okay. Um This is this game is too easy, I guess. And bring you back. Yep. Yep. And then go attacks. We time warp. Thought so. Wait, did I calculate my mana wrong the whole time? Am I the stupid one? I am, apparently. Interesting. Oh, it got mana tithed. Oh, that's sad.
Wow. Um, they know we're stuck here in this loop. Oh no, they didn't. They, they messed this up, right? Oh, that's amazing. Oh, uh, you. And I'm not going to play the drawbridge here. So we are actually holding up the counter spell. One, two, three, four, yes. I was, was I counting wrong the whole time? I mean, you were screaming. Yes, you did. But it's like... Ugh. That's kind of... Ew, not gonna lie. Yep, and they know what's about to happen to them, so... GG. We are ready to play against your God of Winter. And... Mana's looking kind of spicy here, not gonna lie. Um, also, if you're asking, Terramorphic Expanse and uh, Evolving Wilds are in this deck as a like test slot over a forest and a island. Because I wanted to see how relevant it is to have the additional cards in Graveyard for the row to have uh, the shuffle effects for the Brainstorms. Right? Like I have Brainstorm as a card and then I have the Cavalier. So that's why I wanted to just see um, it, how much this matters. And honestly, after this testing, you can just replace these with basic lands and you ha have an arguably better deck. Untap land would be nice. That would allow us to get a Solemn Simulacrum here. Okay. Um... So they go tap land, but it's like snow lands are just super valuable. Oh uh, yeah, they know our hand, so we're just chilling here. Um, I'm not going to show them that we like. I want them to think that we're just stuck on four drops, which we are, um, and that we don't have a land, which we do. However, right? It's like okay, Euron is coming out to play. We get a blue here. And this is going to be one scary turn from them. Do we just YOLO Vanifar? Or do we arguably make the better play and then just go Solemn Simulacrum? I think I just answered my own question. Boom. Okay. So they have one, two. Three, four, five, six, seven mana. Potentially. If they have another slow land, and six if they don't, and five if they don't have any lands, right? Let's see. They are thinking and thinking. Yep, they are at seven mana. Maze Mind Tome. They are going to... I think they're... Yeah. They can just float the mana and then use the Maze Mind Tome instead of committing to the Drown Catacomb if they think they need the double blue here. Yeah, they, they are clearly thinking about something here because yeah, sometimes it's hard knowing what timings you want to have on your, your non-taps. Um, I think I want to cash in the card. Sure, give me a card. I draw a card and drum roll. It's going to be Memory Lapse. That's a really good one. If we drew another land here, because then I would have been comfortable playing the Vanifar, but I'm still not. I am still not comfortable playing the Vanifar here. Okay. This is such a bad idea. It's like, uh... Yeah, I just have to, like, contain myself. <laughs> Basically, I really wanted to just jam this. But, like, judging from this right now, it's very, very likely just a really bad idea. Okay. 
Also, Spark doubling a Sanctum Weaver is not too bad because they see each other and then I have like two dorks that produce two mana instead of one that produces one. Hmm. So let's see. Oh, they they're getting to scary scary mana levels though. Not it's it's really scary. Like when you just let your live, you're just going to have a bad time. Like same with when you let Prime Speaker Benefar live, arguably. <laughs> Land ramp spell, I think. Into the north? Foretell, okay. They untap. I do not block at all. And I am going to play my Venifar. Then pass the turn. I'm very, very much seeing a memory lapse coming. Lapsing the lapse is super awkward, isn't it? Oh, and they haven't... Now oh, I can play the Ornithopter. They don't have a shuffle effect here, right? Yeah. If they hold up Field of Ruin, then this is a super big brain play by them. <laughs> Library. Like, this just shows what we're going to do next turn. But, I mean, what am I going to do? Also, next turn, of Phoenix Save, I can just Vanifar and copy the Spark Double. They draw a card again. Sure. Makes sense. Aw, oh, damn. Imagine if my creatures had actual power. But, like, I, I feel like those, like, the deck, since it wants to, like, go have triple green and triple blue sometimes, it's, like, it's so valuable that your dorks can tap for any color, even though those are usually on just worse bodies, those effects. Like, you can have a 2 mana 2 2 that untaps something, but only a single color, right? Hmm. If they attack here. But, um. They're clearly thinking about something. Also, if you guys are interested in journalist, I have an old, older one somewhere on the channel. The cool thing about my list was that you utilized like a bunch of extra turns, so you would like uh, wrap and main phase one attack with Jorn extra turn and rinse and repeat basically. Like he would just provide you the mana to go extra turn, return, extra turn, return, extra turn, return in like one turn, and it's like disgusting. Also, if Nexus of Fate was still legal, oh boy, like all the decks, like you would see like 20 videos in a row by me just with Nexus of Fate, you would get sick of it, but I am not, like I, I love Nexus, but damn is it a busted card. <laughs> yeah, it does not deserve to be unbanned, to be quite fair, right? But... It was so much fun. Like, getting a free win condition in your deck without doing anything, that's like the real power. Like, I used to run like super low win condition decks with Nexus of Fate, and then just have that as my win condition and just beat them down by ma with man lands or something like that. Okay, yeah, so Marine collects. Yes, and. Okay. Like, our, our game plan is super simple here spot doubling the mana for. Okay, I'm currently trying to think. I don't think the this line matters too much, right? It probably doesn't. I was for one second confused to why this doesn't enter with the plus one plus one counter, and then I was like, yeah, this doesn't matter, and now it has one less one one counter, which arguably does not matter. Right. <laughs> we don't have a time warp right now. That was the other game. That was the other game. They should remove the copy here.
Raven form. Mm -hmm. You are done. See ya. Um, three life is a lot in this situation. Let's hope this works out. Like a snake skin veil or something would have really sucked here. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. What do I get with you? What do I get? I recommend I should have also just brainstormed here. None of these help, right? No, none of these help. Pyrex Tower Scout. But I don't have any cards in hand that I want to get rid of. That's the thing. With the brainstorm, that is. I still think, like, because we're shuffling right now so much, it's pretty, pretty free. Oh, yes. Um, I just want more counter spells to be perfectly honest. Like, I can deal, like, Vanifor deals with their board eventually. So, I'm, it's for me, it's between the Witness and the Thassa, and I think if I just, like, blink Thrag Tusk, that is going to be a great, great tool to stabilize. Right? Yeah. Okay, that's going to be my goal blinking Thrag Tusk. Yep. Also then my Sanctum Weevil taps for two, which is pretty, pretty cool. So, get Thrag Tusk. Mm-hmm. And... Nice. Let's do it. And let's pass the turn and just produce a ton of creatures. I can also just tap Vorinclex down in there, or like Yorn, right? So they don't get to untap. So if they make like a weird turn where like, like if they make a weak turn, tap all out. And I think that's, it's just good as is. I can tap Yorn so they don't get to untap and that just really messes them up, right? If they play any extra turns, obviously I'm going to counter them. Like, that's what I r I'm really, really scared of the extra turns right now. <clears throat> so, they're thinking again. So, how much mana do they have? Four. F uh, that's. Yeah, four, five, six, twelve, fourteen. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. You are not going to resolve. Absolutely not. Good, sir. Oh, and they didn't like that. Arguably, that was too bad, right? Okay, what could I have done to them that the Ugin wouldn't have left to ever? Shuffle effect for the opponent. No, I don't. Like, I don't think I could have really prevented the Ugin from coming down next turn. Yeah, I can't find anything right now. Like, I feel like I still was in a losing position here. GG. We are done with the games. I hope you enjoyed them as much as I did. And yeah, Private Speaker Vanifar is a blast to play. Like, I can't put it any differently. It's really nice. You always have some decisions to think about. Uh, most of the time, it's like just bomb rush, agent of treachery, and win, right? But there are some really cool decisions at work here. Um, as I've said during one of the games, you probably can cut Terramorphic Expanse and Evolving Wilds for a forest and an island. If you don't think the additional synergy with Brainstorm and Uro and Cavalier of Gales is worth it. Um, other than that, a pretty nice deck. Hope you enjoyed. See you soon.